Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Well in this video, it's a short video, I'm going to show you how to hold fragile parts in the vise with less pressure and yet hold them much more securely. And also touch on how you can make unusual shaped cutters very quickly and easily for machining on more than one face at a time with the one setup. Alright, cheers! When you're holding a really fragile part, for example, this acetyl part, um, it's just held by the friction of the clamping on the end of the part. It's also sitting on some parallels and is located with a length stop. But the actual frictional grip is very minimal because that's not good light, is it? Can you see that? So I'm machining out with a T-slot cutter in two different directions there. So you wonder, well, how close are we to the part slipping out of the vise, especially once most of the machining has been done and uh, the whole part becomes uh, more flexible and the pressure of the vise can collapse it very easily. How close are we to it coming loose and what can we do to make it hold in there better? So we can do a little test to see how much we're improving the grip. So I can tighten the vise with a weight on the end of the handle. So I've got a known torque. I can hold the part with a clamp and I can put a little uh, spring scale on it. Let's just try this here and see how much it takes to twist it because under the machining load, twisting is the most likely way it'll come loose. So just put a bit of tension on it. Grips better than you think, the little clamp has come loose. That's amazing. Alright, so I'll tighten it up a little bit more. Friction on, on a flat surface, even a small flat surface, holds remarkably well, doesn't it? Alright, get it down onto that level. Three, four, five, six. These are kilos. Wow, again, let's turn the clamp around. So maybe I don't need to worry, maybe it's holding better than I thought. Alright, we've got a better grip on the part now with vice grips. Let's see how much friction the vice is applying to hold the part. So, 5 kilos, 8 kilos, 10 kilos, it's twisting. Alright, so I don't know how close the cutter load and vibration is to 10 kilos, but let's try something now to improve the grip and see how much of a difference it really makes. So now I've changed the frictional characteristics of the vice jaws by sticking some 400 grit wet and dry paper on each jaw with uh, instant glue. So let's see how much more firmly the part is held. I'm curious. So we've tightened up the vise with the same weight to get the same tension on the jaws. And let's see how much more grip. Remember it started to twist at 10 kilos last time. Let's see what's going to happen this time. Got no idea. 10 kilos 11 kilos, 12 kilos, 15 kilos, 20 kilos, wow, 25 kilos, 35, woohoo, you can see the parts springing, well that makes a massive difference, guess what, I'm going to make do this production run with those pieces of wet and dry paper stuck in there. That's a massive increase in grip. So it's all about the frictional characteristics of the surface that, that uh, matters. And um, that's a really good example of um, how well the little particles of grit 
of um, <coughs> silicon carbide or um, aluminium oxide that are penetrating into the part and just mechanically holding it so much better than the ground surface of a vice jaw. So with those T-type cutters you can really cut on multiple faces. You can probably see now why I was anxious about the part coming loose. <sighs> but I'm not worried now I've done that test with the wet and dry paper. I'm showing you this frictional work holding um, video I might just touch on these cutters so if you've got a part that you want to machine the vertical face and the horizontal face in the one setting to save changing your part you can sometimes do that with uh, special types of T cutters I just ground these freehand on the bench grinder so you can grind a end mill, if you keep your old blunt end mills you can grind them up um, grind it into a T shape there that, and a D slot there in the middle that, that allows you to cut like a, like a, a full T cutter um, this is a very small one here ground out of uh, a, a blunt 4 millimeter end mill and that again cuts on the waist and on the hips of that cutter um, just ground on a freehand bench grinder cutoff wheel. Uh, it doesn't have to run perfectly true provided you've got enough clearance and the clearance makes it quite a fragile cutter and only really suitable for soft materials like uh, acetal and wood and free machining aluminium. Um, it wouldn't work on steel or sticky materials. This one here, you can see I've just ground that out of an old blunt cutter with lots of clearance on it and it cuts really well. Now it might only cut on one tooth on one aspect of the geometry and another tooth on another aspect of the geometry um, but you know for certain types of work that's perfectly adequate and very quick to produce your cutters. Obviously these type of cutters, if you're just freehand grinding them, you have to give quite a lot of clearance and rake in order to make sure they don't rub. You can make them very quickly, just in a few minutes, um, but they are fragile cutters and only suitable for plastic and aluminium and wood and so on. If you wanted to make them out of steel, uh, sorry, if you wanted to machine steel, you'd probably need to machine grind the cutters in order to get the strength. Um, and the accuracy. I'll just show you on the bench grinder the type of wheel I use for this work. So just a narrow wheel like that is good for gutting out the uh, T-slot gap and some uh, fine splitting wheels. It's good to have a lot of bench grinders set up and dressed running true so that you can practice grinding your own cutters. After a while you get the hang of it and it's not too difficult.
Of course I've got my machine grinders for grinding precision cutters, cylindrical grinder, a D-bit grinder and a surface grinder um, and that's great for critical situations of high precision machining steel and so on but often for softer materials you can do it much more quickly and it's good enough just in an offhand grinder. What I mean is because you're grinding the cutter very quickly just freehand you probably need to give it more clearance than would be normal so you know you probably tip your cutter up in that direction and in that direction excessively because that way you know that you're getting positive clearance and this way you're probably going to tip it up excessively instead of the three or four degrees for steel you might be giving it 10 or 15 degrees and that way all of the geometry is going to clear and if you make little errors because it's freehand it won't matter because the high spots are going to do the cutting and if it's an irregular eccentric shape it doesn't really matter because because it's rotating it generates a perfect circle and so you can do very accurate work with um, freehand ground cutters that have excessive rake to make sure they cut where they need to and they don't rub. If you try and freehand grind the correct minimum clearance and rake on a, a complicated cutter you'll likely get it wrong on some geometries without realizing it and the cutter will rub and uh, won't cut at all and will burr the work and it will be a bit of a disaster. I've just found over the years in order to freehand grind successfully you need to give it plenty of rake and clearance. Alright guys thanks for watching it right to the end. Uh, if you like this type of video I'll be doing videos like this every couple of weeks so don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell and uh, catch you again. Cheers.